Do I have everybody's attention now? What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with a conversational video that I'm sure most of the YWC is going to love. Now, we are one week removed from, uh, from Hell in the Cell, the John Cena Invitational US title thing, where Alberto Del Rio became our new United States champion. And I said in the Raw review after Hell in the Cell, I said, don't worry, my video on why Alberto Del Rio was a better choice than Daniel Bryan is coming. So, as a nice little Halloween treat for you, I want to have a conversation with you guys. I want to precursor this. I'm not making fun of any Daniel Bryan fans. I'm not making this video in the sense that, you know, Daniel Bryan's a bad wrestler. I'm not negating the fact that he's a sound technical wrestler and all that other shit. But there are a lot of reasons, you know, storyline-wise, character-wise, and just what makes sense-wise, where Alberto Del Rio made a hell of a lot more sense to be the surprise opponent for the John Cena Open Challenge for the United States Championship. Now... I will say the one downside to this is that it didn't go to an NXT guy, because the one thing about the John Cena US Open Challenge has been that it has given a lot of focus to a lot of either NXT talent or fresh from NXT to the main roster talent, um, and it should have... Uh, there, is a, there is a thought pattern that says it should have gone to one of the NXT guys, and if you be believe that... I, uh, I I really don't have anything against you. I can see where your logic's coming from entirely. I'm not saying that Alberto Del Rio was the best choice. What I am saying, and what I'm doing this response video too, is there is a there is a violent backlash of people who, let's be real, made their own predictions that it was going to be Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan making his you know victorious comeback and you know come back to WWE get another title. Um, WWE never said that. There was nothing ever given for that. Um, so the people that are like, oh, it should have been Daniel Bryan. It should have been Daniel Bryan for no particular reason other than, well, I'm a Daniel Bryan fan, so if it wasn't Daniel Bryan, it was bad. Um, that's not to say that all Daniel Bryan fans are like that, but I've seen it, and I was just, you know, raging that, oh, WWE buried Daniel Bryan one more time, and it's just... It's one of those things, Daniel Bryan was never in the equation. It's like, okay, so Kane and Seth Rollins were in the main event for the WWE title. That didn't involve Daniel Bryan. So were, is Seth Rollins burying Daniel Bryan as well? Because this, the US title open challenge, uh, John Cena, Del Rio, or whoever else they could have had, um, has nothing to do with Daniel Bryan. It was never sold as Daniel Bryan. Uh, I, I, I don't know where the, the big betrayal or the big burial is, but I do believe, honestly, in my heart of hearts, and this is not, um, somebody will twist this and say I'm trolling or whatever, Alberto Del Rio is a better choice for the person to answer the challenge, the person to challenge John Cena, and the person to take the title off of John Cena than Daniel Bryan. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about the surprise factor. Daniel Bryan, we've never forgotten about. Because he's come back, because he's done interview spots, because he was on Tough Enough, because he, I think, is still in Total Divas, I don't watch it. Because he's come back to do pay-per-view pre-shows to talk about his condition, because he's come back to make fun of Bo Dallas and The Miz and to promote his book and, and all those sorts of things. Daniel Bryan's never been out of our minds. Daniel Bryan is still an employee of WWE. We know this. We're all shackling for his return. And they've even gone so far, okay, you want to bash Nikki Bella for being the for being Mrs. John Cena and and you know getting all her success because she's with John Cena, right, right, right. Take somebody like a Brie Bella, who is pretty decent in the ring, and to keep Daniel Bryan even more, they've given her so much of Daniel Bryan's offense, it's almost offensive. Um, not to say that it's not good, not to say that when I'm commentating on a Divas match, I don't love saying with a big smile on my face, <coughs> Brie Bella with the Daniel Bryan silly kicks, but but it really, they've never let him go out of the forefront of our mind, they've never go, go out of our periphery. So, Daniel Bryan, for all intents and purposes, and yeah, we've heard the rumors for months that he's cleared, WWE is just waiting for the right time to bring him back, so we all know that. So, oh, John Cena's doing an open challenge, oh, of course it's Daniel Bryan. Uh, it wouldn't have been a surprise. It wouldn't have been, oh my god, it's Daniel Bryan, I can't believe it. It would have been, oh, it's Daniel. Of course it is. Whereas Alberto Del Rio left the company. 
left the company, was fired for abusing some guy. There's a big hoofra in the media about racism, and as there should have been. Uh, the guy that was racist to him got fired. He got fired for abusing him, whatever. We know, if you follow the little indie companies, I, I don't, but I know he's at least made a decent name for himself in Lucha Underground, in uh, AAA. I don't know what the A's stand for. I'm sorry, I don't speak Mexican. That's a thing. Uh, to my knowledge, he's still a champion in AAA. So for all of those reasons, for you know, you know, he's he's a champion somewhere else. He's not going to come back here. He was fired for racism. Of course, PG WWE is not going to bring him back for assaulting an employee and all this sort of thing. And and it's just there was nothing. WWE did a good job of hiding it. WWE did a good job. Um, hinting that there could have been other people, you know, people were speculating that it could have been Kurt Angle, which is fine. People were speculating that it was going to be Tyler Breeze, which I would have loved, but I actually do like the fact that he's feuding with Del Rio instead. There was nothing, and they they hid it well. There was nothing to... Why are we beeping? Why is this a thing? I'm like two minutes into a video. There was nothing to, 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 to even hint at the fact that Alberto Del Rio was going to be involved in this. There were rumors that he was coming back to the company in general, but they were quickly dismissed. And, uh, and as I say, the way WWE is trying to cover their own ass recently, an employee assaulting another employee is not something you're going to come back from right away. And he's made a name for himself somewhere else. And he's a champion somewhere else. There was nothing to indicate to us that it was going to be Alberto Del Rio. The surprise factor alone, as an anonymous opponent, as an open challenge should be, was a legitimate surprise. Um, could it have been Jeff Hardy? Yeah, that would have been cool. I would have marked out even more, but that's just me. Let's take a look at the history. There's no reason for Daniel Bryan to want to steal anything from John Cena or to get back at John Cena or sneak up on John Cena while John Cena's not looking. Um, the only real history that we can think of in recent memory between Daniel Bryan and John Cena was when John Cena handed Daniel Bryan a title shot out of nowhere for reasons. Um, they're both faces. It would be awkward. Um, no. And it's just, you know, the Daniel Bryan fans, or anybody, anybody really, I appreciate, I'm not one of Daniel Bryan's biggest fans, but I appreciate the guy's a hell of a worker. Um, I would have rolled my eyes too and said, well, Cena's winning this. Cena's winning this. And they would have been raging about it before the match even ended. And that's sad. Whereas Alberto Del Rio and John Cena and not only have a storied history, a storied like multi-month history of feuding over the WWE as it was at the time, championship, to the point where they were fighting in a broken ring in, an, in a no-holds-barred match. There has been things here. De De Del Rio is a heel. Cena is the penultimate babyface. They have a history. They have a history of rivalry. They have a history of fighting over gold. There's all kinds of reasons where if somebody's going to be the one, you know, you were the last one, I was the last one you were suspecting and sneak up on John Cena in that way in sort of that unsuspecting fashion, it makes sense that somebody diabolical like Heel Del Rio would do that. There's no reason for Daniel Bryan on his big comeback to the company to target John Cena and the U.S. title. There really isn't. Um, take a look at who will be helped by the U.S. title more. Uh, Brian, we've seen, has a tremendous history of coming back from injuries, picking up titles, and dropping them because he's injured again. Now, every time you vacate a title and make a new championship from scratch, you sort of erase the history of said title. Look at the WWE title. Look at the Intercontinental title, um, Daniel Bryan's last two big outings. Uh, the U.S. title, at the best of times, is the number three championship in the company, and I know with John Cena, they have tried to make that a bigger thing. They put it on John Cena, they gave it the focus, th they put the John Cena spotlight on the U.S. title to give it more, um, give it more prestige. They set up the, uh, the entire rubric of this John Cena Open Challenge. Which was something, whether you like John Cena or not, and I'm slowly coming around on the guy, whether you like him or not, it became something you were looking forward to every Raw. Um, that alone, that you're looking forward to that segment, made the U.S. title more important. People were speculating as to who was going to beat John Cena's Open Challenge, therefore they were speculating, and there was a lot of conversation about the United States Championship. Now, if you put it on Daniel Bryan, now Daniel Bryan, I've said a bunch of times, Daniel Bryan gets John Cena booking. You put the U.S. title on Daniel Bryan, he's going to go out there and have a match, and he's going to win, and I'm going to say, well, it's Daniel Bryan, of course he won. Of course he did. Look at, look at WrestleMania a couple years ago, him versus Triple H, he won. Of course he did. 
him versus Del, uh, not Del Rio, him versus Orton and Batista in the main event. Was there anybody in the world that didn't think Daniel Bryan was about to get himself handed that title? Um, there's no suspension of disbelief. People will say, oh, it's a John Cena match, of course he's going to win, but you would have, you know, you would have John Cena part B in Daniel Bryan because you send him out to do a match. He could continue the Daniel Bryan open challenge, but it would be the exact same problem. Oh, Daniel Bryan won, of course he did. Who out there thinks that WWE is going to get somebody like an Adrian Neville or, or, a, or a Kevin Owens or a Sami Zayn or whoever and let them beat the other golden boy of the company? Now, Alberto Del Rio doesn't have that, and also he's a heel, so he's probably not going to do the open challenge. He's going to go and create some decent storylines with some decent people, win his, win his title when he has to with scheming means, and he's been away long enough. He's been away long enough, and the roster has had enough turnover that there's people in the ring that he's never faced. On Monday Night Raw, he faced... Oh, who did he face? It was Alberto Del Rio versus Neville, something we've never seen before. Now, you want to go across the pond. Did they fight in the UK? Did they fight in Mexico? Maybe. I don't know. If you know that they fought... If Pac and Alberto Patron fought somewhere else before the WWE, throw it down in the box below, because honestly, I'd love to see it. But second of all, for the mainstream, casual WWE audience, we've never seen Alberto Del Rio versus Neville. We've got enough new talent on the roster that we can have a bunch of matches that we've never seen before. SmackDown was him versus R-Truth, which it is what it is. But... He's got the title. He's not as injury-prone as Daniel Bryan. That's just a fact. I'm not being cold-hearted. But you want to put a title on a guy that's going to be there. That's that's it. I'm not trying to be cliche. I'm not trying to be part of the authority here, but that's best for business. You're not going to get people invested in a title when you give it to somebody and he has to hand it over to somebody else because he's injured. Um, so you're going to get a lot of new matches out of Derry. You've got a heel holding a belt, which is always good, which means you can pluck any one of the baby faces off the main roster and have, have sort of a, a, a new chase, a new chase, a new chase, a new chase. You weren't going to have a babyface chase storyline with Daniel Bryan as champion, were you? Were you, really? And I mean, this is all assuming that whoever answered the challenge would have won, but let's think about the apocalypse that would have happened in the YWC if Daniel Bryan op answered the open challenge and lost. It would, just be, it would just be the end of days, it would be the end of times, it would be like the worst thing ever. But, um, no, storyline-wise, going forward, who helps the belt? more going forward, Alberto Del Rio. Now here's a story, here's a story, and I know, racism shouldn't be a thing in wrestling. Race shouldn't be a thing in wrestling. Uh, where you come from, what language you speak, whatever, shouldn't be a thing in wrestling. But I hate to break it to you, it is. Daniel Bryan's an American, with the US title. Yay, that puts him about on the same level as Jack Swagger. And I, don't, and I don't say that as an insult. Jack Swagger is another vastly un underutilized talent, vastly underestimated and undervalued talent in the WWE. But as far as character, as far as where your story arcs can go, um, they could do intricate storylines person to person. But WWE does like to use the tropes of you're American, you're not American, I don't like you because you're from here, etc. Uh, if they choose to go that lazy writing route, you're not going to get anything. You've got nothing to go on with Daniel Bryan. Alberto Del Rio... Okay, as much as I would like to say that it doesn't matter that Alberto Del Rio is Mexican, it does. Um, <laughs> oh, I could say lots of really mean things about Rey Mysterio right now, but I won't. Um, a Mexican holding the American title can go a lot of different ways. A Mexican heel can say, look, Americans, I came to your country and I stole this from you because we are better than America. And you can build on that. You can do, or he can turn face, which a lot of people are predicting. Do uh, you remember face Alberto Del Rio getting ready to face Jack Swagger at WrestleMania for the title? And he was a face, and he went on that big thing. He There's a big video package of him by the Statue of Liberty talking about how appreciative he is of the American culture, the American people, to give him the opportunity that he couldn't get in his homeland. And he's proud of his, his Mexican heritage, but he's even prouder to come to America and, and take the opportunities that they have given him and he's going to hold the United States Championship proudly as a way of thanking America. Like, you can do so many character building things with that. You can do so many storyline things with that. As a heel, 
he can tr come in and trash America. Somebody that's uber American, like a John Cena, like a like a Jack Swagger, like Bubba Ray Dudley has done in the past, can come along and say, no, you're not going to fuck with America. Uh, conversely, look at what they did with Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter a couple years ago. You could have a foreigner who comes into their country very respectfully, like a ba like a babyface Del Rio, and have them be racist or anti anti immigrant. My chair's doing its thing again. There we go. Uh, have them target him because he's an outsider, because he's an immigrant, because he's not from here, and build a storyline going that way. I'm not saying that these have to be the frameworks of the storylines, but I'm saying Alberto Del Rio being the champion and being what that championship is, let's be real for a second, because it's the Murica champion, um, it, op it opens up so many other tropes and storyline gateways for stories going forward. Now, you gotta go look at each guy. Who needs it more? Who needs this belt and this victory over John Cena on their resume more? You got Daniel Bryan, who's been handed just about everything in the WWE. Former US champ, former IC champ, former tag champ. Um, money in the bank, no, he didn't win Money in the Bank, did he? He, he main evented WrestleMania despite the fact that he didn't win the Royal Rumble. He has been the man. He has been the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He has been the man when there was a title that said you were the man. Now, before anybody goes crazy on me, they're going to tell me, okay, well, Del Rio's been the WWE Champ. Well, Del Rio's been the World Heavyweight Champion. Either time he hold, held either one of those belts, you guys know my thought process on the World Heavyweight Championship. If there are two world champions, there are two people calling themselves the best. That means that neither one of them is really the best. So, either time he held either of those titles, there was somebody at least equal, if not better than him, on the roster. He's never gotten to hold the belt that Daniel Bryan held at WrestleMania that said, I am the A1 number, guy, number one guy hood ornament of the company. So you can't, so you cannot compare Daniel Bryan winning two matches against three guys in the same night, walking out as the singular best guy in the company, and Alberto Del Rio, who cashed in Money in the Bank on some B pay-per-views and held some very, very much less valued belts. You can't. He's he's won Money in the Bank. He won the he won the biggest Royal Rumble in history, which should have gotten him that big spot, but it didn't. D Daniel Bryan has done everything he can do in the company, has, has, has achieved everything he can achieve in the company. Um, he, he literally, like I say, I go back to it a lot. In one night, he beat three future Hall of Famers in two matches and walked out unbelievably the number one guy in the company. Del Rio has never had that. Del Rio should have had that the year that he won the largest WWE Royal Rumble in history. He hasn't. Daniel Bryan has been to the prefaces. He has been to the absolute apex peak of the mountain in WWE. Why the fuck do I believe that he gives a shit about the U.S. title? And if you're a champion or a challenger in a championship situation and I can't believe that you give a shit about that belt, then you are useless in that storyline, in that division, in that feud, in that contest, in that match. You are. Del Rio has been away. He's been away for a long time. People know the actual reason that he left. He does have his culture to fall back on as far as a storyline. He has history with John Cena. He has an abundance of reasons to want that belt. He was fired because of a racism thing. So he wants to come in, face a white guy, take the American championship off him to, to, to get his revenge. And, and for the fans out there, um, it, it's good. It's really, really good to sit there and smile and be like, yeah, this guy got fired for a, for a racism situation. He just beat the biggest, whitest guy in the company for the American Championship. Also, as I say, once again, John Cena is the hood ornament of the company. He has been that number one guy that Daniel Bryan has also been. Alberto Del Rio hasn't had that opportunity. So to topple John Cena is a separate thing all onto its own. And then the United States Championship also becomes a symbol of beating John Cena, which... Daniel Bryan's already done. He's already had that handed to him as well. Um, and again, as I say, there is a heated history between Alberto Del Rio and John Cena all the time. So you can always fall back on a little bit more of a cliche angle of unfinished business. 
all kinds of all kinds of good stuff going on here. The last point I want to make is Cena's going to make a comeback. We're not, we're not rid of Cena. Cena's taking some time off. Cena taking some time off. All I got to say, really, I, I can't I can't really hate on John Cena. Good for him. Go take some time off. You've been out of the main event scene for fucking how long now? You've taken the U.S. title, brought it back up to prominence. You've used it to f focus on so many of the young talents in the WWE. Um, you always come back from injuries early. You've been working for the company. You've been the main guy for 10 years. Take some fucking time off. Good for him. And good for Nikki Bella for going and taking that time with him. She's going to let the Divas division breathe. He's going to let the main roster breathe. It works out well for everybody. But... And this is a big, big slash through the middle, but he's going to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to come back for his title. Now, tell me why I should give a shadow of a fuck about John Cena versus Daniel Bryan. Two faces that we know respect each other, that we've already seen John Cena hand Daniel Bryan a title match out of nowhere once already. And we see what that got us. It got us Daniel Bryan getting injured and fucking off and handing the belt off to the next guy. Now... John Cena can come back and say that title was supposed to be used to bring up new stars. That's what I wanted to use it for. You've taken that ability away from me. You've taken my, away my ability to highlight this next generation of stars that's coming out. John Cena can come back and say, look, I know you don't respect this country. I don't, I don't have any problem with Mexico, but you have a problem with America and you want to make some sort of statement by stealing the American championship. Fuck you. I'm going to steal it back and I'm going to do it for America. That's fine. You want it, or you could go the, the angle of, you know, you got unfinished business with me, I got unfinished with, business with you. You didn't have to sneak up on me and show up anonymously and all this sort of thing. You could have stepped up face to face with me right now. Let's go. There are so many stories, so many angles, so many different ways they can attack that angle, that, that Del Rio Cena angle when Cena does come back, that it makes no sense. When I, what, I've, what I've always said, when, when, when we talk about matches, when we talk about storylines in general, it's like, okay, so Daniel Bryan beat John Cena for the title, now what? And there's not much there. There's a couple things. They could have a feud out of respect, and it would be cute, and they could hug it out, and I, I could just pick up this, just, just vomit in the bucket. Or we could have a defined good guy versus a defined bad guy talking about national pride, talking about pride in their title, talking about pride in their company, talking about pride in the future superstars that are going to be the future of the company, which is what John Cena was doing with the U.S. title open challenge. There's so many more things that you can do with that. And the last one, and I will say this is a much more selfish thing for me, who did I want to see back on my screen, Daniel Bryan or Alberto Del Rio? The, the answer is Del Rio every day of the week. It really, really is. Daniel Bryan has been seen as the talent that he is. He has been to the mountaintop, as I said before. He has he's existed in every situation in WWE that you could possibly exist in other than going into the Hall of Fame. Um, he's gotten ridiculous sympathy from all of his injuries and Roddy Roddy Raw, he's gotten more comebacks than anybody else in recent memory that I can think of. He's been handed a belt every time he's had a comeback, which makes the belts useless. Um, it's just a thing. Del Rio, Del Rio, when he left, felt like he was about halfway through his book. Daniel Bryan, I've read the book, I've passed the last page, I'm already bored, and I'm drawing doodles on the back cover. That's where I'm at. Uh, so the last one, the seventh point I'm going to make is my own self on a personal level. I don't care about Daniel Bryan. I don't. And that's not, as I say, I have to say this before people twist it about. It's not because I don't think he's a good wrestler. It's because I don't care. You can be good and I can not care. Um, Alberto Del Rio is good and I do care. And uh, that's a guy that legitimately got fired and hasn't done anything and hasn't needed somebody else coming along and reminding us that he's still a thing and hasn't needed, oh, we're going to pick some Spanish female wrestler and, and make her wrestle like you so that we keep you in mind. That's from Del Rio legitimately being gone and me as a fan having a chance to miss him in that 20 by 20 box. That's it, guys. Um, not, as I said, 
not trying to offend anybody. I'm sure the people that want to be offended are already scratching, scratching away at notes, trying to tell me how wrong I am. That's cool. That honestly, throw it down in the box below. It, it's fine. It's my opinion. I know I've broken the YWC rule book. Rule one, paragraph one, line one. You can't say anything bad about Daniel Bryan. I'm actually not saying anything bad about Daniel Bryan. I'm just saying in this one particular circumstance, Del Rio made a lot more sense. Hope you enjoyed this. I, I really hope you've got a lot of thoughts to share, positive or negative. Throw them down in the box below. I uh, hope you guys are having a good Halloween. I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I'm out. Tagging out. Happy Halloween. Sunshine,